Joining me in the studio now is economist Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz. Bernard, thanks very much for giving up your time this evening. What are your thoughts in general on the new rules? Well, the government had to address the issue of foreign ownership of New Zealand land. Globally, there is a drive on, particularly in the emerging countries who are looking for arable land with water to buy these assets. And China is the obvious case, and we're seeing that expressed through the May Wang UBNZ bid for Crafer Farm. So the government had to address it. They've come up with a solution of sorts. It's a bit of a fudge, which is says... This, is this because they've addressed it, they've had to address it for political reasons or economic reasons? I think for both, actually. Um, we do have to consider that China is expanding fast. It's looking to get its hands on the production of raw commodities. Now, it's doing it in Australia, Brazil, Africa, and New Zealand, too, as a target. So we have to think about it, at least. Whether we choose to open our borders and say, here, you can buy it if you want, and the government's decided we'll retain some flexibility to say no if we want. The economic impact, it's feared, is it will drive the price of farmland down. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? It, uh... No, I actually think it's a good thing. And um, it was interesting to hear Bill English say at the press conference today that even some people in the farming community uh, uh, realise that by putting the shutters up to foreign buying, you're actually going to allow those land prices to settle. In many cases, uh, they have to drop. There is a lot of debt in the system there and it needs to be worked off. And having those land prices drop will mean that a lot of young farmers who currently are locked out will be able to get in. Also, when you look at what's happened with the global economy, um, free movement of capital, sometimes a bit too free movement of capital has been a problem and maybe this is the inevitable result. Do you think this might put off foreign investment? I think it'll make people think twice. Um, they may have to push a bit harder, and the current criteria, or the new criteria, will say you need to have New Zealand directors, you need to demonstrate you're going to be here for the long term, you're going to employ people, and that can only be a good thing. You certainly yeah, don't want... To so this, this will probably put off the sort of investors we don't want here. So the government's right. done well in this respect. Yes, in discouraging the fast buck speculators who are coming in looking to take advantage of a, a bounce in, in land prices and then flip off again, or simply to... Um, extract resources and not develop them here. Putting a Kiwi director onto a board doesn't strike me as a particularly stringent measure. I may be wrong here, but how easy do you think it will be for people to get round the red tape? Well, interestingly, UBNZ and May Wang had already done that. They'd put a New Zealand director onto their board. They've also argued that they're going to uh, actually develop um, the produce here. They're going to pack the milk and turn it into milk powder, which is pretty much the same as what Fonterra does. So maybe it'll force actually local producers to ask the question, are we adding enough value to our product? Uh, if the foreigners are going to come in and add more value, maybe we should do the same. So I think it's going to force New Zealand to ask itself quite a few questions about how it develops resources, how highly valued land is, and what happens next. Now, funnily enough, you mentioned uh, Mei Wang then. So although this isn't retrospective, uh, were it retrospective, Crayfile probably still would have gone in the same direction. Well, it would have been at the discretion of the minister. And the one. And, that, and that's where we're talking about the fudging side of things. Sorry for, for interrupting you there. Um, how is that going to work? A minister having the powers to advise the OIO of what they think should happen? That's the risk, that the process becomes politicised. One of the benefits of the OIO was that it was relatively transparent. People who were buying knew what the rules were, and it wasn't in the hands of politicians. This brings it back into the hands of politicians, which voters may like, but there is a risk there that when you see that, that um, you know, interests can get involved, and the government has to be very careful that, that any decisions are made are really made in the in the national interest and not in some sort of party political interest. Do you think the government could have done more today? They could have changed the Overseas Investment Act. They've decided not to, to leave it fudged in the hands of ministers. They could have actually written it into the Act so it was much clearer. But they've chosen not to do that. They obviously don't want to send too much of a signal offshore that, that the shutters are going up. But there is a risk here that by choosing not to make it explicit, they have fudged it and that there is a risk of people coming in and hoping to twist the minister's arm or say the right thing and get over the line. Great. Thanks very much, Bernard Hickey from interest.go.nz. Appreciate your time.